Android. Now at 10, Web City, Missouri ROTC Color Guard honors fallen soldiers with a flag presentation at the Mount Hope Wall of Veterans. Plus, four state athletes head to Carthage to mark Memorial Day with the Murph Challenge. And investigators work to uncover clues to identify the remains of World War II veterans. The four states most watched news starts now. President Biden delivers remarks at Arlington National Cemetery. Plus, four staters gather at area cemeteries to remember lives lost as America honors military men and women who gave their lives in service to our country. This is KOAM News at 10. I'm Tanya Bach. One of the Joplin area's most historic cemeteries, Mount Hope Cemetery, played host to a special Memorial Day ceremony this morning. The Web City ROTC Color Guard presented flags at the Mount Hope Wall of Veterans in Web City. Mount Hope General Manager Travis Boyd welcomed everyone to the event, saying it was their first COVID service since COVID. Now Boyd expressed a special thanks to Charlie Tutu Outdoors for getting the event going again. I want them to experience just the, the remembrance of what, we're, what this day is about. You know, it's a nice long weekend, but this day is bigger than, 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 than the weekend. It's, it's about our country, about our soldiers that, that, that died for us, and, and just take that with them when they go celebrate that they remember that. That's why we're doing this. The event also featured guest speaker, retired Colonel Mark Costello, as well as a color presentation. Midwestern Built Carthage joined other gyms around the country to commemorate Memorial Day with a tradition, the annual Murph Challenge Workout. Now this workout honors Navy SEAL Lieutenant Michael Murphy, who died in Afghanistan in 2005 and was awarded the Medal of Honor. The standard workout includes 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups and 300 air squats. Participants also run two miles. To put ourselves through somewhat of a suffering that like, obviously we're not dying, but we are suffering through this workout to try to put ourselves through, through some sort of pain. I just wanted to see all the gym come together at one time. We usually work out in classes, so I don't get to see everybody at once. So I thought that sounded fun. Uh, plus Murph is kind of a famous workout that I always hear about. And I thought, well, it'd be fun to see if I can do it. The challenge has variations to suit everyone's skills and abilities. Good thing, because I can't even do one pull up. More than 60 people joined the event in Carthage. The money raised during the event will be donated to Allison Brown, a gym member who's battling cancer for two years. Federal experts are working against time to identify soldiers who died serving in World War II and other conflicts. Technicians at this lab in Nebraska have been using advances in DNA technology to identify missing American service members, comparing bones to chest x-rays taken by the military. Other anthropologists examine watches, shoes, and other items for clues. The goal is to offer about 200 families a year the chance to honor their relatives with a proper burial. These are individuals that gave their lives to protect our freedom and they paid the ultimate sacrifice. So we're here holding that promise that we'll return them home to their families. So it's important for them to honor their legacy. It's important that for their families to show them that we'll never stop, no matter what, we'll keep, we'll keep looking for them. I don't know. Corporal Charles Ray Patton was recently buried with full military honors thanks to the lab's work. Patton died 74 years ago during the Korean War, but spent decades buried as an unknown in the National Memorial Cemetery of the Pacific in Hawaii. Well, Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty joins us now with a first look at weather. Well, I hope you had a great Memorial Day. At least we got to calm down a bit outside. Finally, we got a day that was dry and we haven't seen scattered showers and thunderstorms across the region. Temperature is pretty good. Our average high now is 80 degrees. We made it up to 82. We started at 61 during the morning hours. Of course, no rain today, but we had quite a bit of rain in several spots over the weekend. For the month, we're at 5.4 inches of rain for the year 17. Average is 18, so we're about an inch behind, but that's okay because we're out of the drought now, and it looks like we're gonna stay that way as we go through at least the next month or so, and then we'll see how the summer really sets up. All right, we're gonna slide back through the 60s, 61 for a low, back to 74 by 10, and we do have some rain chances in the forecast. We're gonna look at that here in a bit. 
All right, looking forward to that. Thanks, Doug. Severe weather slams the four states ahead of the holiday. One Missouri neighborhood is now picking up the pieces after a tornado. Lauren Barcheski has the details. Lisa Arndt says she and her family were having a laid back evening Sunday at home when powerful storms tore through the Melville area. All of a sudden, my husband screamed, run, and we grabbed the dog and ran down to the basement. But before that, I saw the water swirling around and hitting our window and all the leaves and tree branches and just kind of swirling around our house. This tree was snapped in half and tossed onto the road near Morningdale Place and Valleyside Lane. A lot of trees, a lot of trees in this neighborhood. It's a beautiful place, but yeah, it's uh, it's a mess right now. And the mess only gets worse as you drive down Morningdale. These two neighbors had some of the worst damage. A garage destroyed on one side and the entire left corner of the home next door was brought down to the ground, tearing up their backyard and bringing down the power lines. Katie Piles lives across the street. And then we heard a woof against the house and then all the doors opened because of the air pressure inside. Then we ran to the basement. After it passed and the rain was still coming down, everyone came out to check on their neighbors. And everyone's okay, healthy. The fire department came, checked and made sure everyone was okay. And the damage didn't stop there. Even further down the street, shingles were peeled off roofs, car windows were broken, more trees came down, and random things were picked up and thrown into people's yards. I've now inherited a kayak. So whoever is missing an orange kayak, they can come get that. Arndt says it's a miracle no one was seriously hurt. We were singing Send Me an Angel by the 80s band Real Life, I think it was, yeah. And I truly believe that we had an angel wrap their wings around our home. Well, the weekend storms also brought their fair share of hail and tornado damage to southern Missouri. Mountain View authorities confirm multiple injuries as well as downed trees, and power lines. Weather damage wasn't just confined to Missouri over the weekend. At least one tornado tore through several towns in Arkansas, killing at least eight people in the state. The city of Rogers was one of the hardest hit. Chip Scarborough has more. This is what used to be the roof on Tony and Landon Walker's home on Sycamore Street in Rogers. An overnight storm ripped it right off. They grabbed their two sons and raced for cover as the storm hit. Tried to make it into the hallway. That's the most central part of our house. And that's when we realized we didn't have a roof. Yeah. There was water and debris coming through the attic fan. Across the street at Joseph Wilson's house, an oak tree fell across part of the house. He and his family hid in the bathroom while the storm tore through their neighborhood. You know, just wind and rain just pelting our, our house. And then uh, I knew I'd have a, at least a couple of trees down, but I didn't realize that all my trees would be down. Despite an especially trying time, both families are counting their blessings. We're just uh, very thankful that we're alive and that we're uh, still here to live another day. Our boys are safe. They're sad to see their stuff gone, but we've just been trying to point to the importance of they're safe, we're all safe, and it's just stuff. Authorities say this weekend storms killed at least 19 people and injured dozens more across the Midwest as well as parts of the South. Now, the Public Service Company of Oklahoma has stepped up to assist their sister utility, Southwestern Electric Power Company in Northwest Arkansas, to restore power to the communities affected by Sunday morning's tornadoes. An early assessment shows extensive damage to the electric system, including approximately 300 downed utility poles. PSO has dispatched more than 200 line workers, forestry personnel, support staff, and additional business partners to speed the restoration effort. Well, later in sports, some big league action on the diamond today. John Dales has the latest from the Cardinals and Royals coming up in sports. But first, federal authorities estimate close to 3 million people will hit the road this Memorial Day weekend. Well, the bad weather is hampering traffic as millions of Americans are traveling home from Memorial Day weekend. 29,000 flights have been delayed since Thursday. As Chris Van Cleve tells us, the TSA saw a record number of people on Friday, nearly 3 million. And today will be another busy day. Nearly 44 million Americans were expected to take to the roads and skies, setting records this Memorial Day weekend. 
It's chaotic here. It's, it's absolutely chaos. There were long lines Friday at airports across the country, and today is expected to be nearly as busy. TSA estimates more than 2.7 million people will be screened. We will be boarding by group number through like At United Airlines' busiest hub in Denver, they started preparing for summer travel months ago. We're gearing up for our largest summer ever. Jonna McGrath oversees United's Denver operations. Do you and your team feel added pressure when it's the summer to make sure things go as best they can? Absolutely. We want to make sure that we're providing that on-time departure. We're also navigating the weather. So really planning on how we react when things go wrong and making sure we have a great plan to work through the weather issues and get our customers to their destination. The summer destination for Denver resident Jen Underwood and her daughter is Italy. Is we really like to travel slow, so we're only staying in one Airbnb for the whole time. And that means that it's a lot cheaper per night. They'll be among the 271 million the nation's airlines expect to fly this summer, up over 6% from last year's record. Revenge travel is over. We're now traveling because we can travel, want to travel. But Airline analyst Henry Hartevelt. Chris, the airlines are up to the summer travel season. What I'm more worried about is the FAA right now. The FAA has been struggling to hire new air traffic controllers. Something Margaret Brennan asked Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg about for Sunday's Face the Nation. So we inherited about a decade of falling numbers in terms of the number of air traffic controllers in the workforce. But we've got to make sure more people are brought in, trained, qualified, hired, and retained uh, at that high standard. With more severe weather likely, we're watching the hub airports up and down the East Coast as delay makers for flyers. On the road, AAA expected between 3 and 7 p.m. to be the busiest this evening. The United Auto Workers Union is accusing Mercedes of interfering in a union election at two of its factories in Alabama a week and a half ago. The UAW claims the German automaker intimidated and coerced workers to vote no. The union filed an objection with the National Labor Relations Board asking for a new vote. Mercedes says more than 90 percent of workers participated in the election and a majority voted against the union. Well, Doug is next and a little later. Kids in Pittsburgh make a splash today at Schlanger Park. Well, of course, it turned out to be a nice uh, Memorial Day for us today and Monday, finally dry. We had fantastic temperatures outside. Let's check out our allergies. Uh, of course, they stay high this time of the year. Today was a 9.3 out of 12, which is kind of moderate high. Same for us tomorrow as we're going to be an 8.1 out of 12. So if you are an allergy sufferer, especially the grasses, that's the biggest one right now, you are going to be suffering as we go through the next uh, few days. All right, pretty much clear skies. We've seen this pretty much all day long for us today. Not a whole bunch across the central plains. Out to our west, you can see this little kink in our upper level flow. This is a very weak wave, but it's going to shoot down across southern plains, producing some showers and thunderstorms uh, across the southern plains, but we're going to be right on the northern edge. All right, let's go into the morning. Clouds increase. You can see a couple little spotty showers. Not a big deal. These push through, but hit and miss spotty showers throughout the day. Here's a noon hour. Better chances farther south you live, and then any spotty showers out of here by tomorrow evening. Tomorrow night looks fine. We drop back uh, lower 60s to upper 50s once again. And then on Wednesday, we have another back wave that's going to slide to our south. But again, I'm going to put in a very slight chance for a few showers, especially in our southern counties as we get into Wednesday afternoon. But a lot of you won't see a drop as we go through the next couple days. And then by Thursday, we'll be dry outside. All right, so let's get a little wider vantage point so you can see where these waves go. So here's tomorrow's wave down through Oklahoma and then Wednesday's wave down through Oklahoma and Texas. That's where any severe weather would be. Uh, we're not going to have any severe weather. We get a chance to actually dry out a bit and not deal with severe weather for a few days. 62 in the morning, 74 by noon. High temp, 78 degrees. Let's go into Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday because it starts to pick up again. Here's Friday. Showers and thunderstorms drive through a little bit stronger, so we want to watch those. 
Even on Saturday, our chances drop, but a few isolated thunderstorms. Then they go up again, especially late Monday, or late Sunday, Sunday night, and into Monday, we're gonna see uh, the thunderstorms across the region. So if we break it down, stronger storms Friday through Sunday. Low severe threat, but it will be there. As we get into early next week, a higher severe threat late Sunday into Monday. And then our severe threat right around June 8th through June 10th. And traditionally that ends severe weather season. Then we go to MCS season, which are just those big complexes of storms that drive through during the overnight hours that we see in June and July. But a traditional severe weather season, we only got about 10 days left, 10 to 12 days left, which is good. 78 tomorrow, 80 on Wednesday, 80 on Thursday. Some thunderstorms back in Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, but temperatures pretty good through the period highs into the 70s and 80s. All right, definitely warm enough to hit the pool or maybe the splash pad. Memorial Day marks the unofficial start of summer and what a better way to kick off the season with than with a trip to a splash pad. Schlanger Park Splash Pad in Pittsburgh brought out kids today for fun filled ways to beat the heat and for some of those kids it was the perfect way to spend the day. Still ahead the Cardinals and the Royals both play on the road this afternoon. John Dales has the highlights from each of those games and more up next. A year ago on Memorial Day, the Royals had a record of 17 and 38, 21 games below 500. And at Memorial Day 2024, Kansas City enters the day with the reg with a record of 34 and 20. And if the regular season were to end today, the Royals would be in the playoffs with a wild card spot. Royals taking on the Twins in Minnesota. Joe Ryan on the mounds, and he causes all sorts of trouble for Kansas City early. Third inning, he strikes out MJ Melendez and a foul tip. Next batter is Dyron Blanco. He also goes down swinging. One batter later, Michael Garcia. He's going to punch out as well, then get thrown out at first on the drop third strike. Ryan gives up one run in seven innings with nine strikeouts. Fifth inning, Twins up two to nothing, and this will add to it with two runners on. This three run blast off Alec Marsh makes it a five nothing Twins lead. Now to the ninth, two outs, Royals down 6-3, bases loaded. Garcia hits a grounder over towards third. Willie Castro's throw though, offline towards first base. Two runs are gonna score. Royals cut into the lead. They're now down just six to five. Next batter is Bobby Wood Jr., guy you'd want up in this position, but he also hits an infield grounder. This one just gonna get tossed over to first to end the game. Royals make it interesting in the ninth, but the Twins hang on to win it six to five. In the National League, the Cardinals come into today on a hot streak. Winners of five in a row, and if the Redbirds can get a sixth consecutive victory, that would bring their record back up to 500 for the first time since April 16th. Cardinals on the road in Cincinnati. Top of the first inning, no score. Paul Goldschmidt drives one deep to left field. Gone for a solo shot. That's his seventh home run of the year. Cardinals take a one nothing lead. Bottom of the first, same score. Heimer Candelario drills one off Lance Lynn, down the line and gone. He answers back with a solo shot of his own, game tied at one. Second inning, still tied until Will Benson punches one the opposite way into the outfield for a single. Nick Martini scores, it's 2-1 Reds. In the seventh, 3-1 Reds. Fernando Cruz coming out of the bullpen gets Dylan Carlson to strike out swinging. Next batter, Nolan Gorman, same exact result. Then Pedro Paul has also goes down swinging. Cruz strikes out all five of the batters he faces. Cardinals get no offense outside of that first inning home run. They lose to the Reds three to one. The NBA playoffs continue along tonight. Neither the Eastern nor the Western Conference Finals have been very competitive thus far. Last night, Mavericks open up a three games to none lead on the Timberwolves. Tonight, the Celtics have a chance to sweep the Pacers. Now, despite the series being three to none in favor of Boston coming into today, two of the first three games very close. Same is true tonight. The Pacers and Celtics down to the wire. They go in game four, fourth quarter ending just before 10 o'clock. Celtics win it though, 105-102.
They advance to the NBA Finals for the second time in the last three years. So we know the Celtics are in the Finals. Very well could be the Mavericks also getting a sweep. That game tomorrow, and then both of them have a long rest before the Finals start next Thursday. Has it always been that way where there's a definite start date for the Finals? No, or? I... I can't remember a time where it's been this long of a pause. So I, I think they might, must have changed it recently. Yeah, and it's probably pretty rare for them to get both teams to get That's a right. Yeah. yeah. Well, and who knows? It hasn't happened yet. All right. Exactly. That's a look at sports. We're back with more news after this. Hey guys, it looks like another pretty nice day for us on Tuesday. We are going to have a few hit and miss showers. Not a huge deal. 78 for a high 80 on Wednesday, 80 on Thursday. Again, an isolated shower. Better chances for thunderstorms Friday and then especially Sunday and Monday. And that's when our severe threat returns. All right, final sports note. College summer baseball in the four states really gets started this week. The Joplin Outlaws, they've already started their season last week, but they played their first home game this Thursday. Then the Nevada Griffins also start their season and play their first home game. That's on Wednesday of this week. So busy week coming up for baseball. All right, looking forward to that. We leave you tonight with another look at the splash pad in Pittsburgh's Schlanger Park. Thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great night and an even better Tuesday.